How is it going everyone? Today I'm here with my WWE NXT TakeOver San Antonio review. Of course, NXT TakeOver San Antonio took place live on the WWE Network tonight. And for a show that honestly going into it, I was not very excited for. I thought the build for it was very lackluster. I thought on paper the card wasn't, you know, as strong as previous TakeOver cards. So going into it, I wasn't very excited for the show. Uh, but I will say, coming out of it, for I was very uh, surprised for someone that went went into it with very low expectations. I ended up loving the show. I thought it was one hell of a takeover. And, uh, you know, I thought it was really fun. You had three great matches, in my opinion. You had two solid matches as well. Um, I was very pleased on how the uh, show ended up being. So, um, NXT, once again, delivers with another great takeover, in my opinion. And, um, yeah, I thought for this to jump right into the review with my overall thoughts on pretty much all the matches. So, of course, the show opened up with Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young. I thought this was a fun opener here. You know, uh, Ty Dillinger was very um, aggressive from the get-go. was very dominant early on. Um, but before that happened, actually, Eric Young uh, tried to give Ty Dillinger one last opportunity to join Sanity. You know, he gave him the jacket to, uh, you know, give him that one last opportunity. Ty Dillinger threw it in his face, and that's when Ty Dillinger had his nice little hot run on Eric Young. Um, you know, the number of games was trying to play into effect with the... Uh, Gillian is a Killian Dane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Killian Dane. That's his new name. A uh, big demo. Uh, and Alexander Wolf were on the outside, you know, trying to interview uh, interview a handful of times, which uh, Ty Dillinger was able to outsmart them. But eventually, numbers game caught up when uh, Killian Dane ended up hitting a running uh, crossbody onto Ty Dillinger on the outside, which pretty much would go into Sanity's favor for the rest of the, ma the match. Eric Young would take over. Uh, very dominant on. Uh, Ty Dillinger, the Ty Dillinger to have his hot comeback. Kyle was right out behind uh, Ty Dillinger. But uh, yeah, this match paced well. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Uh, ending was kind of like, you know, I kind of thought it was overdoing because he had Ty Dillinger go for uh, the tiebreaker. Alexander Wolf got in the ring, end up, or hits a tiebreaker on uh, Eric Young, sorry. Goes for the pin, but Alexander Wolf drags his foot onto the rope, so the, ro uh, the rope, or the pin was broken up because of the rope break. And then you go for the tiebreaker again on Eric Young, but uh, Alexander Wolf would get in the ring. Uh, ends up hitting the tiebreaker onto Alexander Wolf instead. Hits a super kick onto Killian Dane, and then, uh, of course, um, Eric Young hit a will barrel, will barrel neck breaker on Ty Dillinger for the win. So Sanity gets the win, or Eric Young from Sanity gets the win. I was really hoping for Ty Dillinger to get the win here. I thought, you know, he hasn't won on a takeover yet, and he's pretty much red hot right now in NXT. I thought it'd be, you know, a better choice to have him win, but you know what? It is what it is. Eric Young gets the win. I can see they're trying to build Sanity up, so I don't mind him winning, but I feel like Ty Dillinger definitely could have benefited more from this win. But, yeah, it is what it is. Fun match, entertaining. I enjoyed it. Solid opener. From there on, we go to Roderick Strong versus Andrade C and Almas. This match was awesome. Uh, hard hitting, stiff, um, very uh, quickly paced, uh, very smooth transactions, great counters, uh, some good near falls. Uh, very fun match here. You know, I think Alex runs upside of best. It was kind of an indie style match, and honestly, it was. He's had a lot of hard chops, he had a lot, a lot of hard kicks, had some uh, really good callbacks, he had some really good uh, just smooth transitions into counters. Um, I just had a lot of fun with that. I thought if you guys like hard hitting chops and just a stiff match overall, this is your kind of match. And um, I thought both men shine greatly. You know, NXT, both guys are kind of under underrated. You know, I know Roger Strong just kind of came to the scene, but Andrade Cien Almas really hasn't hit his stride yet. And I feel like this match is kind of his breakout performance. Him, you know, delivering the best match he's had so far in NXT uh, was Roderick Strong, I feel like, in this match. So he definitely um, looked great. So Roderick Strong, like I said, both these guys had a breakout performance in this match, if you ask me. And uh, that's all I can really ask for these type of matches. And yet, we had two guys with some proof, you know, have them both go out there and just break out. And that's what I feel like they did here and delivered an awesome match. I really enjoyed that uh, matchup between the two of them. I knew going to this, this is the match I was looking forward to the most. I thought this match would steal the show. And in my opinion, it did. I thought it was the best match on the card, to be perfectly honest. I know some other people might say that two other matches were better than this, but. My personal favorite match on the show was Roderick Strong, Andrade Cian Almas. Uh, hot finish as well, you know, with a lot of great counters. You know, Roderick Strong hitting a backbreaker onto the top rope. Uh, you know, he just drops him down onto the post, which actually looked pretty painful. Uh, Andrade tried the running knees in the corner several times. Third time with the charm, though, ends up hitting on Roderick Strong. Goes for the, um, the DDT, but Roderick Strong is able to counter it. Into the sick kick for the win. So, Roddy gets the win. Very happy about that. I really wanted Roddy Strong to win, and he did. So, um, really enjoyed the match and enjoyed the outcome as well. So, great match from both men there. And from there on, we go to the NXT Tag Team Championship match. Uh, of course, DIY defending their tag team title against the Authors of Pain. Going into this match, you know, I didn't think anything of it, but honestly, coming out of it, this was fantastic. This was a great match here from both tag teams. You know, DIY just continues to have amazing matches in NXT, and Offense of Pain, in my opinion, had their best performance yet. 
excuse me, in this match against DIY. So incredible stuff here from both teams. Really enjoyed that. Uh, you know, Gargano and Ciampa, our Ciampa, you know, right from the get-go had a strong start, had, you know, pretty much off to the pain in, you know, favoring them over the of pain, really dominated over them, over them and of course off to the pain. Had their comeback uh, pretty much shut down uh, DIY and just pretty much started decimating um, DIY from there on. Gargano was pretty much getting the beat down from the majority of the match and of course uh, Champa got the hot tag which Champa just went absolutely ape shit in this match. He had two German suplexes on both of them which you know look at Champa, look at them they're twice his size and the scene just double suplex them like they're nothing was absolutely awesome. And uh, this was just great. Uh, good back and forth action, you know, uh, just, it was awesome. That's all I can say for this tag team match. Uh, a lot of near falls as well, you know, the handful of times where the DIY would entertain uh, and make Alter the Pain suffer the first defeat, but then Alter the Pain would come back and, uh, you know, and shut him down immediately. So, good back and forth action, crowds are hot for it. DIY is just so good, I can't even express how good they are. So, um, this was great. Really enjoyed that. Uh, and the ending was awesome as well. Yeah, Jerry Gargano. Had the uh, Gargano escape on one of them, and then Ciampa locked in uh, his submit uh, the uh, the cross arm or the arm breaker onto the other one. So pretty much, you know, mirroring the finish from the Toronto match with the revival. However, Austin Payne both countered out of it, or one of them uh, were able to counter it into a power bomb, power bomb Champa or Gargano onto Champa, which would break up the submissions. But Gargano and Champa would have another comeback, setting up their tag finisher on both men. But Austin Payne were able to counter it into double power bombs followed by the last chapter or whatever the finisher is called. I don't know what it's called. Uh, but Alter the Pain, new tag team champion that the, that the pin on Champa. Um, you know, it's a little disappointing because I really want to see DIY have a longer tag team title run, especially considering they're red hot NXT. I feel like they're the hottest thing going around. But, uh, you know, Alter the Pain, they've been building these guys up since day one, and uh, I can see why they won. But I'm just, like I said, disappointed. DIY got a sh such a short reign. I wish it went on, went on longer, but it is what it is. And, uh, but yeah, can't complain about a great match so, there, so, really enjoyed that matchup. And then after that, we actually had a big surprise segment with Seth Rollins invading the ring, pretty much calling out Triple H, saying that he's taking over this bitch, and, um, he's not leaving until Triple H comes out. Triple H does come out, which is a huge surprise. However, he does not confront Seth Rollins, he sends security guards out there to get Seth Rollins and then carry him out, so, uh, that was a little segment there that they didn't have to do, but they did it, and it played hugely, you know, of course, old storyline, Seth Rollins trying to get up at Triple H, he finds him where he knows he's going to be at, and, uh, yeah, this is a great little segment there, and I thought that was gold, so, great way to continue the storyline there, and then, of course, we go into the Fatal 4 match for the NXT Women's Championship, Asuka versus Billy Kay versus Peyton Royce versus Nikki Cross, uh, this was good. I, I felt like this match though was a little flat and uh, didn't do as much as I thought it could have done. I felt like Billy Kay and Peyton Royce uh, really, this was their time to pretty much showcase themselves, but they didn't really do that at all. They kind of just hit and ran and, um, you know, they didn't really do much. Nikki Cross and Asuka had a great exchange that, of course, Nikki Cross would go after Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, which would lead up to the announce table. Then, you know, uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay would end up suplexing Nikki Cross to a table, so that was a pretty cool spot. And then, of course, uh, Nikki. Uh, not Nike Cross, uh, Peyton Royce and Billy uh, Kay would team up on Asuka in the ring till Asuka had her comeback on them, and it would end up uh, pinning Peyton Royce to retain the championship. So, um, like I said, this was good. It was short and definitely, you know, just felt flat. And Billy Kay and Peyton Royce come up, came off like the biggest idiots in the world because, you know, they're best friends. They're holding hands in the match. They're running away together. And they're both, you know, like, I think Peyton Royce pinned Asuka and, like, Billy Kay, like, held her shoulder downs for leverage. Why didn't one of them just pin each other so they could win the, the, the titles together? Wouldn't it be smart to say, like, P Peyton Royce laid down and Billy Kay pinned her when Asuka and Nikki Cross were both out? Didn't make any sense, but it is what it is. Asuka retains, solid match. Just like I said, it was, sh it was short, and it just fell flat. And hopefully we get Asuka and Nikki Cross at the next TakeOver. I know, uh, you know, Ember Moon supposedly the next big one to face Asuka, but honestly, at this point, I'd rather see Asuka and Nikki Cross have a match instead because Ember Moon... I don't know. They haven't done anything with her yet, and I'm honestly just not interested to see that matchup right now. So, yeah, solid stuff. Just wish that, you know, like I said, short, fell flat. Uh, and then we go to the main event. But before the main event, they showed uh, Tyler Bate, the United Kingdom champion at ringside. And, of course, you had Matt Riddle in the background trilling him, which that was hilarious. So that was cool to see Tyler Bate at the show. And then we go to the main event, which was the NXT championship match, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bobby Roode. Um, this was great as well. I thought this match was awesome. I felt like, you know, this wasn't the most technically sound match, but the psychology, um, the 
urgency between Bobby Roode in this match against Nakamura. The storytelling, the selling, I thought, you know, a combination of all these different elements uh, made it to an awesome match. You know, and it was pretty long. It was almost a 30-minute match, and honestly, it kind of just flew right by. At first, they were kind of messing around. They'd do a few block-ups and a few, uh, you know, counters, but then, you know, they'd go back, they'd go to taunting. So the first, you know, bit of the match was just kind of just messing around the filling, the filling out process, I guess you you, you can say. And then it picked up, you know, Bobby Roode started working on the neck and the, the upper shoulders of Nakamura after he dumped Nakamura on the outside and Nakamura landed on the steel steps. So, uh, therefore, that played into the story where, you know, Roode was just working on the neck of Nakamura. Uh, you know, Roode was very dominant in this match and Nakamura, of course, had his comeback, uh, bringing out the King of Strong style out of him, you know, going back to the takeover match with, with Sami Zayn where he was stomping Nakamura, or uh, stomping uh, Bobby Roode's head into the, the uh, apron on the outside. Uh, bringing out that, you know, like aggressiveness in Nakamura that we, we've honestly we haven't really seen since his match with Sami Zayn at TakeOver Dallas last year, so I was pretty happy to see that here. He busts out the uh, the rolling arm bar, which I'm a huge mark for, especially when he does it, it looks absolutely great. So I was very happy to see Nakamura bust out the rolling arm bar on Bobby Roode. But uh, yeah, Nakamura just got really aggressive. Uh, he hit three Kinsashas, he hit one pretty, he hit a drop kick, and then he hit one that was pretty close, you know, they didn't. He, they say he didn't fully connect with it, but he basically hit a Kinsasha. Uh, hit a Kinshasa shot the top rope, which would um, injure his knee or continue the injury of his knee. Then he hit a third Kinshasa where uh, he didn't cover Bobby Roode because of the knee injury. Because when they, there was a spot where uh, the second Kinshasa he hit on the uh, the apron on the outside. He hit it, on, and, but the way he fell, he landed on his knee, was selling the knee. They were selling like he, I don't know, they didn't explain what kind of injury to it, but they just said his knee was hurt. Nakamura was on the knee for a while. He was dragging himself back in the ring. Doctors were checking him. Jason Albert came out, or Matt Bloom, sorry, came out to check on him because he used to be called Jason Albert. So uh, Matt Bloom came out to check on him. Bobby Roode tried to capitalize it by hitting a glorious DDT. Nakamura kicks out for a very near fall. Uh, then Bobby Roode works on the knee. He puts him into a single leg Boston Crab, just punching the knee of Nakamura. He's doing anything he can to gain the leverage on him. And then finally end up hitting one last glorious DDT uh, for the 1-2-3 victory. So Bobby Roode is your brand new NXT champion. Um, very, like, happy, but kind of, like, let down at the same time. Because I'm happy not, uh, Bobby Roode is NXT champion. I feel like the direction they're going uh, with the momentum he had, I thought it was the right call. But it also was kind of disappointing because I really wanted to see Nakamura versus Cassius Ono at the next takeover for the NXT title. Maybe we'll still get that match, but not in a title match. But I just really wanted to see that match as the main event of the next takeover special. So um, I'm happy, but I'm kind of like, ah, man, I really wish Nakamura had been champion still. But uh, like I said, I still thought it was a great match. Like I said, it wasn't the most technically gifted match, but given psychology, the urgency from Steven Bobby Roode, uh, the selling, I thought it all mixed it into an awesome match. And I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was definitely a solid way to end the show with Bobby Roode being crowned your brand new NXT champion. So, um, yeah, that'll do it for my review, guys, for NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Like I said, overall, I thought it was a great TakeOver special. Uh, definitely blew my expectations out of the water. You had three great matches, of course. Roddy and uh, an Almas, I thought, put a match tonight. My opinion, Autism the Pain and DIY was a great uh, match, and the main event was spectacular as well. So, great TakeOver. Really enjoyed that. Royal Rumble is tomorrow night. That should be another great pay-per-view uh, to end a great weekend for wrestling. So I'm very excited for that. But uh, if you guys like the video, please leave a like below. And uh, yeah, if you guys like, leave your comments about a takeover in the comment section if you guys would like. And tell my Royal Rumble review tomorrow. I'll see you guys and thank you guys for watching the video.